For some people, growing up without the most advantageous childhood can instill a passion to make life better for others. This was true for Fraser LeVay, who left a stable job seven years ago to create a charity for low-income children. I'm gonna make sure I take care of the kids who are me growing up. We take kids Christmas shopping, back to school shopping. We give summer camp scholarships to kids. Uh, we refurbish sports fields. Just being an athlete myself, I just know how much sports can keep you out of trouble. While running this nonprofit, Frazier also writes a blog to inspire and guide others, from food to traveling to much more. Traveling is just so important. I think it just opens your mind to the possibilities and creativity that is out there. Where you're from isn't where you're gonna end. So why and how did he reroute his life in this direction? Keep on watching and see why Frazier is a real American game changer. Frazier LeVay, I'm so happy that you're here. So when I first talked to you and I first met you, um, we met at some coffee shop and you were telling me, you, I think at the time you were worth the Sun's charity, but Tell me, before all we get into any of that, how did you get into the world of charities and nonprofits? Yeah, so yeah, like we, we met way back when I was working at the Phoenix Suns Arena and uh, I was doing a lot of stuff with the Suns Charities. And, uh, and essentially, a long story short, is I came uh, from a background of lower income, you know, kind of grew up in trailer parks, went to the worst school in my town. Um, I've actually never met my biological father, which is uh, another important kind of anecdote to all this. And so growing up as a, not necessarily a troubled child, but uh, a kid who got into trouble here and there, failed a lot of classes, um, never the most popular, never the most anything. I grew extremely late, I picked on a lot. So I always thought, you know, if I'm ever successful, popular, whatever it is, or whatever I can do, I'm going to make sure I take care of the kids who are me growing up. So I got lucky enough when my uh, stepfather came in and their family to get some incredible role models. I had a history teacher who was also my gym teacher who was immense in my kind of growing up aunts and uncles. So I was lucky to have some great role models. I'm just so fortunate to be where I am now. Uh, I have my dream career. I've had my dream house. I've had stuff I could never imagine. And it was kind of like, what's next? Like, sure, being financially well off is cool. Traveling the world is cool. But I mean, it's not fulfilling, if you will. Um, and so I just want to make sure I help kids who are like me because I got a lot of help uh, growing up and just know how important role models are. And boom, I started charity about seven years ago, maybe eight years ago unofficially. And since then, it just kind of raised on up and we're helping people all over Arizona and around the world. Yeah. You know, I, so before this interview, I went to your Instagram and I really looked at, so if people out there want to know, the Instagram is Change Your Stars Foundation, but it looks like you really make an impact in helping them. Can you tell me a little bit more about the foundation and what is your big overarching goals um, with Change Your Stars? Yeah. Uh, I mean, kind of like I was alluding to, is just kind of, I want to be almost like not only helping people and we take kids charity shop or Christmas shopping, back to school shopping. We give summer camp scholarships to kids. Uh, we refurbish sports fields, which I think uh, just being an athlete myself, I just know how much sports can keep you out of trouble, whether, you know, I think every day of my life growing up, I had some sort of soccer, hockey, basketball, whatever it was. So I had no time to get into trouble. So uh, I think that's really big. So I've, I've focused a lot on doing a lot of sports stuff because that's in my wheelhouse. A lot of stuff that I do for a living and for fun is within the sports realm. Um, and through that, it's just, you get, like I said, these role models that are so important and I take kids under my wing and, you know, I text them who are, whoever you kind of form a great relationship among all these events we do. And it's great to keep in touch and watch these kids grow. And, um, and I also encourage all of our volunteers to kind of keep in contact with the families we help. And it's more important about what you uh, give than what you get. So quick, for instance, I was in Peru. We built a, I volunteered for a week and we built, um, a soccer field and a basketball court and that kind of stuff. And I had more fun on my Peru trip. Now I did go vacation later on. I had more fun on, and such an amazing experience on my Peru trip than laying on a beach somewhere and just drinking margaritas or doing some nonsense like that. Like truly giving back and being part of a community and feeling that love is so impactful for them, but also just for us who volunteers. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, being able to touch so many, you know, families and, you know, it's crazy. When I first met you, it was like only in Arizona. Now you're doing trips to Peru and internationally and it's amazing. Yeah, we're excited. We've got Africa and Colombia on deck. We always do something in Mexico during a sports tournament and I throw. Um, so I definitely just want to grow this organically. I mean, that's kind of, it started out as a small and then it's kind of continued as we've gotten partnerships, meet people like you, meet, you know, other people just kind of want to spread the world. And I've just had, had people really make this their charity. It's so hard to donate. That's another reason why I started it. Like you want to do all this stuff, but there's so much red tape to do. There's this and that where I tell a lot of business partners I have, like, make this your own. Um, if there's something you want to do, let's do it. If it's within the realm of, you know, the scope of what we do. And, uh, and a lot of colleagues, friends, partners, small businesses have always wanted to kind of be a part of it. And that's what's helped it grow so much. So, you know, one aspect of the, what you work with is you work with a lot of families, work with a lot of kids. Has there been a family or a situation that really touched you, that really kind of inspires you um, in general that, you know, that just made a major impact on you? Yeah. I mean, there's always a handful uh, yearly. And I mean, there's a family I always keep in contact with. And there's even times where I've, I've been loading turkeys and stuff into someone's car and you see this person's car and it's just like, the seats are rotting out of it. It's there's garbage piled to the ceiling. There's, it's just insane. Insane is a poor term, but uh, it's incredible to see the poverty that people in our own country live in. Like here we are, I'm all for helping around the world, but you never think that the USA, the strongest, most influential, whatever uh, country it is on earth has 30% of its, uh, citizens like under the poverty level it's absolutely crazy to me that here we can like help and i don't know not to say no one cares but i mean we're, we're trying to solve a million things around the world and we haven't even solved poverty in our own country so it's uh when money gets wasted not to turn it political but money gets wasted a lot and it's sad to see that um you could end poverty in the u.s in our own country and then end it in another country or you could solve hunger. I mean, 30, 27% of kids in Arizona are food insecure. That's wild where, um, I think a big, another thing on me when I started kind of creating the charity is like, here I am, I worked at the sun's arena. I walked by the sun's court every day on my way to work, which was mind blowing. Like as a kid where I grew up, it was nuts. And, uh, like that was just spine tingling over and over. I had season tickets to that season tickets to the coyotes, to the Cardinals, to everything. And I wasn't appreciating it. And, um, and I was like, I have all this abundance, just like how many people in Scottsdale and Arizona have all this abundance and how can like we give back and touch those families and help out and kind of end this, which is very, I mean, the cure to hunger is all around us. It's food. It's not hard to get, it's not hard to give and people just don't do it. Do you think there really could be a solution to end food insecurity, to end pop, you know, uh, end food shortage or uh, starvation or anything here in the, in the United States? Yeah, I mean, it comes down to it, and this will be the, the harshest thing I say. It's like food insecurity and food shortage could be cured if it mattered to people who weren't food insecure. Uh, I feel like COVID, the money that was spent on COVID through the bailouts would have solved world hunger at $15 a day for a hundred years, um, just like one year. And it's like, it seemed like people didn't really care enough about that because it didn't affect them. And then the second, oh, me and you can get sick. Oh, where do we start? How do we help this? How do we fix this? There's so many things that if it doesn't matter to us, people don't seem to care too much. And um, so that's something that's always kind of bothered me. Everyone's so worried about when it can affect them, but you know, there's five billion, million, uh, 5 million people die a year from hunger and, and like in the world and literally like food exists. We can, we can sponsor a kid for $5 a day and they won't go, go hungry. You know, it's just, it's wild. The, the amount of money we spend on things where it's military, whether it's this or that, that isn't necessary. Um, Moderna took how much money from the U S government to create a vaccine and then to give the money back where they could have solved world hunger. So, uh, it's wild that the waste and not just government, not just people. Um, sorry, not you throw companies. corporations in there as well too. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so um, I just think people need to care. And when it's your health and when it's your loved one's health, 
you care, but when it's people you don't know about that you don't care about, less people in, gen- in general want to care. And that's my soapbox. That's my- <laughs> no, I, I completely agree. I think it, it comes down to a lot of people, you're right, if it's not in front of them, it's not, you know, hitting them and every day they kind of, they kind of put the blinders on in so many ways and just kind of act like it doesn't exist. So you do a lot of traveling. Um, you have uh, kind of an interesting company as well that kind of helps, you know, show people the best way to see the world. Tell me a little bit about that and how did your kind of your travel bug start? Yeah, so my travel blog, inspiredtraveleat.com. Um, I started it three, four years ago. Um, it's kind of wild, just so many things in my life just accumulated to this point. Like I have a journalism degree, which I never used. I have a master's in sport marketing and management. Uh, I traveled a lot and people would always ask me what to do, do this. Um, my friends always just throw their credit card at me and just have me plan the trip because they didn't care. So I would take care of that and I'd research things to death. People visited Phoenix and Scottsdale, Sedona. I would have like in my notes on my phone stuff to do. So I didn't have to retype it all the time. I just copy and paste. Uh, There's just so many things I was doing in life. I, I started working for USA Today for a year and I saw that blogging was an actual thing. Like there's million dollar bloggers out there and they're not that good. Um, there's ones that are very good as well, but it was crazy to see this whole, I know that existed. And once I saw that, I knew one, everything I'd done in my life has like culminated to this point of just writing, um, writing about travel, writing about inspirational things. I also do a lot of food with the food travel and, uh, and recipes for lack of a better term, bachelors, bachelorettes. Um, just easy, simple stuff. So it's basically everything I love doing thrown into to one thing. And I mean, it sounds awesome. And the charity sounds awesome. Um, by the way, the charity is a complete nonprofit. Every dollar goes towards the cause. So that's about 1% of the charities in the world out there where most of them always have a president getting paid, uh, this, this and that. So this is all completely volunteer based. Um, but my point being, so the charity and the website sound like this dream job, but until you're went from zero debt in your entire life to negative a hundred thousand dollars for a few years, you kind of test yourself on what uh, the struggle really is. And I put myself through it. I mean, I went from my dream job, I had everything and then I just quit to start this stuff and it sounds great and successful now, but damn, it was scary. Oh, I bet. Um, But why do you think it's so important for people one to see the world but to understand culture and to, and to really learn and know about, you know, just everything that's happening. Yeah. Traveling is just so important. Uh, one from just the beauty to seeing so, how just gorgeous the entire world is, but I always say culture is so important. Um, I know when I moved from Canada to the U S and I moved to West Texas, it was the biggest culture shock of my entire life, even more than being in Asia for two months. Um, just to see the way people think and, uh, if you've never left, same thing with my hometown and people who live in France, people who live wherever, if you've never left your community, you think the exact same thing your community told you, you think what your parents would think, the religion you're supposed to go uh, and do. Like, for instance, I grew up Catholic and I always thought Catholic Catholicism is the only way, um, which the Nicene Creed says it is. And then you go to Southeast Asia and you see that there's Buddhism and just as many people who are just as friendly or friendlier or nicer, the exact same. They just believe in Buddhism because that's what they're taught, where they're born up in their community. And you go, well, there's, you know, being Muslim or whatever it is across the world. It just opens your mind to a whole different way to live. I mean, even in Europe with their four day work weeks, it's that in itself is a, a culture shock from the U S where we're just, you know, meant to go, 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 make more money, make more money no time for life, only time for your job. Um, Whereas Latin America, they slow down significantly more. Uh, I think it just opens your mind to the possibilities and creativity that is out there uh, from whether that's religion, community, your work week, your life, your social ecosystem, whatever it is, um, it's mind blowing. And if you never leave your community, if you never leave your state, you'll never really see that. And you'll just kind of be thinking the only way to do it is the way that your parents did it, your grandparents did it, your community does it, your church does it, and that's it, which isn't wrong. It's just, there's so much of the world to see. And to think if you're just born out of a human being in Egypt, you have a, have a completely different frame of mind. So, 
100%. And to me, traveling actually can connect people in just so many different ways. And um, what is your favorite dish so far? I know you like, you're a foodie. So what, out of all the places you've gone to, what is the favorite food that you've eaten? Yeah, so I do a lot of lists, like top restaurants in certain places. And uh, I actually have one about like my favorite meals I've ever had. And I am, the food obviously taste is really important. That's a big one. But I think the ambiance and just the setting, especially when you travel, uh, I'll give you a quick example, like Sedona, there's a great Italian restaurant, but it's like, if you're going to Sedona, I would maybe take a nine out of 10 dish and have the entire view of Sedona versus sitting inside an Italian restaurant, even though it's beautifully decorated. So with that said, I just love these settings where like you walk in and it's just like spine tingling, like you're in that city. Like you don't go to Sedona for Italian food. You don't go to, I don't know, Mexico to have Greek food or whatever, or a hamburger, you know? So anyways, to that said, I was in Laos, in Luang Prabang, in this like really old, gorgeous city. And you had to walk across a, a bridge, like a man-made wood sticks, little bridge across the Mekong River, which is like a historic river. And you walk across and there's this like this little lesser known restaurant across the water and you sit down on the floor and they put like this urn in the middle of it. And it's uh, like a barbecue and you cook your own food on it. And it's a, a Lao barbecue. It's kind of similar to a, a Korean barbecue, but it was just the setting, how you cooked everything, the giant urn that we put the little pan on and cooked. And then the taste was incredible as well. So this meal in Laos, and then, I mean, we had two drinks each and we ordered three orders of like this, we totally Americanized the heck out of it and ordered as much food as we totally could until we couldn't move. And uh, it cost, I think, like $12 each. So, oh, wow. Yeah, That's that was amazing. a big fan. And one time I was in Thailand and I was in the jungle for like a week and they were just serving us curry all the time, which I like curry now, but back then I didn't. And also the curry they were serving us was like Thai curry and it would kill you. This is like 20 years ago. It was really hot. And again, I wasn't a hot person. We got out of the jungle and right across the motel, there was like this chicken stand, just like a little hut. And there was live chickens right next to the place where they were chopping up the chickens. And then also in Thailand, you eat with your hands. So they gave us a bag of rice and then this chicken that was the most fresh chicken in the history of the world. So you keep in mind that coming out of the jungle, starving, just want some good kind of food. And I just remember like just like stuffing my face. Like it was, I felt like Hook or Peter Pan and Hook just stuffing my face with all the food I could eat. And that was another. Oh. I've got more like those, but the, always the settings and the, and the reasons for the food is, is a big part of it. That's amazing. I mean, coming out of the jungle, yeah, I probably just, you know what, uh, does he? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I want a Big Mac. I want something like, <laughs> I'm not like a soup. I'm not, I'm pretty cultural, but I need some comfort food here and there. Yeah. So last question. Um, and so on my show, I like to end it with hope, a message of hope and try to give some kind of inspiration. So if you had any message of hope for the next generation, for our generation, for anyone, what would you be your message for the, for, of hope? Yeah. This is going to be something I'm going to reflect on and wish, damn, I wish I said something better. Ah, um, I just think, you know, you don't have to save the world. You don't have to save the country. You don't have to save the state. All you have to save is one person. Um, with my, with my charity inspire travel eat, it was just me. And now it's 20, 30, a hundred people sending the message. Now it's on your show. Uh, and I didn't go out it with a plan to change the world by myself. Um, but with everyone's help, we change one person, we change two people, we change three people. Uh, I was changed by all my role models and hopefully making the place a better place. Uh, let's change your stars. The reason it's called change your stars is because you can look up and you can always change your path. You can always change, you know, where you're going. You can always change your stars. Um, where you're from isn't where you're going to end. And that's why I was trying to tell the kids that there's always hope and uh, we can just help those kids. We can help those people to reach their goals. Frazier, thank you so much for joining American Game Changers. Really happy and thank you so much. Thanks for having me so much. Appreciate it. Absolutely.